So I'll share for the first time. I can only speculate. Uh, while writing Fear, Inc., I can tell you there was a strange pushback within CAP. For example, I know that CAP had a budget to do an all-out press breakfast, something just like this. But, uh, and by the way, everyone was paid, and there was money left over in the budget. Are you guys still with me? Okay. But, uh, and, and by the way, it was supposed to be originally a 25-page report, and when I started my research, I told them, a great Jaws quote, we're going to need a bigger boat. After all of that, we still had money left over. I was told by someone senior in CAP the week the report was about to be released that they were going to bury the report on that Friday on an afternoon caller right before the storm was about to hit in DC. I was literally told, Wajahat, if you don't use your networks to push this out, I fear it might just die. So then I became a marketing outreach guy, in addition to researcher writer, and I used all my grassroots connections all the NGOs, the think tanks, the leaders in different communities. I used Facebook and Twitter. I gave a people a heads out it's coming. I used the online community blogs, and I also coordinated an op-ed with Guardian, and a few other writers did as well. It came out, it triggered, and went viral, okay? And it took a life of its own. Eli Clifton, co-author, and I had tremendous pushback with including memory in the report, which we thought was a slam dunk. Memory, if you don't know, is the Middle East Media and Research Institute a Middle Eastern press monitoring agency created by, 10 seconds, created by former members of the Israeli Defense Forces that supplies translations relied upon on many, uh, by many members of the Islamophobia Network. We traced it. That includes Spencer, Pipes, Gaffney, Act for America. We found it very strange that we had to prove that it needed to be included, even though we found the direct quotes. Around that same time, Memory had received State Department funding. Nobody was fired. All of us who worked on Fear, Inc. found out that we could no longer work on Islamophobia or broader Middle East related topics if we chose to stay there. There was self-censorship. APAC proxies such as former communication director Josh Block had ties to senior figures at CAP and we believe were able to influence them that these were third rail topics and we believe at that time they were effective in scaring CAP's leadership. But at that same time, as you remember, Andrews Breivik, the white Christian nationalist in Norway killed 76 people, left behind a 1,500-page manifesto, which directly quoted nearly every single person mentioned in the Islamophobia report, and he shared their ideologies, and slowly but surely, more and more, this became mainstream. And then, then about three to four to five to six months afterwards, CAP started promoting the piece and owning it. I'm 